Hi all, our instructive game today will have a look at the theme of exploiting double pawns around the opponent's king. To demonstrate this theme, I'm going to choose the game Nicholas Pert vs Stuart Hasinger, played in last year's British Championship of 2007. So Nicholas Pert playing white played d4, and Stuart Hasinger played d5, and after c4 we see the ultra-solid Slav defence. Now in this game it was quite remarkable how black's position deteriorated very rapidly and one aspect of it is the interesting system that white played. First after knight f3, knight f6, he plays now e3. So this is quite an unusual move, blocking in that c1 bishop, not playing um, the knight to c3. It seems the main emphasis is to make sure white is in control of the c4 square more than the usual uh, main line uh, Slav variations. So this is quite a handy idea to bear in mind if you don't want to know all the theory of the Slav. After a6, now another unusual move, knight d2. Usually the knight would go to c3, so white's blocking in the queen, which means that if black ever develops the bishop to f5, it will be trickier to play bishop d3. But... After bishop f5, what Nicholas Pert does now is play queen b3. So there's a couple of ideas. First, there's a bit of pressure on the b7 pawn. Second of all, it does support bishop d3 now. So black defended the b7 pawn with queen c7. And after bishop d3, black perhaps should have taken on d3, but instead actually played bishop g6. Now this is slightly controversial, as we'll see. After castles e6, white now played rook e1, and black played bishop e7. Black doesn't fear bishop takes g6 at the moment, because hg, and maybe, you know, black can use this pressure, maybe, you know, knight d7, castles queenside, and there'll be a, be a bit of pressure on white's king. So white actually played now e4, so that's quite logical, freeing um, the scope of the pieces a bit more. And after castles... White now played e5. Perhaps black was unwise not to have simply just taken on e4, because now this pawn wedge is quite dangerous in itself, this pawn on e5. After knight fd7 now, white now doubles these pawns. So these double pawns, are they a liability or not? Or has black, you know, positionally succeeded in ridding himself of a potentially bad light squared bishop? So he can now, you know, he's got his pawns on light squares. And maybe he can start to strengthen his control on the light squares. Black never really had enough time to see the fruits of that bishop exchange. In this position, white now played knight f1. So that's quite a neat knight manoeuvre to f1. It can come to e3 or g3. After rook e1, white now played bishop g5. Now if bishop takes g5 and knight takes g5, then the white queen might even swing to h3. Black could defend with knight f8, but white would have quite a pleasant position. Instead, actually, black played bishop f8. And here now, white intensified the pressure on the queen side by playing rook ac1. So there's a threat now of cd, and if ed, queen takes d5, exploiting that pin. So white um, is threatening to win a pawn. Black now just played queen b6. And now Nicholas Pert played queen c2, so he's eyeing that g6 pawn. But again, here it's unclear how white will further exploit these structural um, weaknesses here. Black now played d takes c4, releasing some of the, the tension in the centre, trying to free his own position now. After knight e3, though, you know, white is not re routinely uh, recapturing on c4. This, this would be quite a pleasant um, possibility to play knight takes c4. Black still tries to liberate his own position now by playing c5. But here, instead of knight takes c4, which might offer white a good advantage as well, white actually played d5. And this starts to undermine this pawn structure, as we'll see. The game didn't last much longer from this position, actually. After e takes d5, knight takes d5, black's queen went to c6. And now, can you spot the nice move white played here, which prepared to further intensify the pressure on these double pawns. If you want to stop the video, or I'll, I'll say the move in a couple of seconds now. White actually played 
knight f4. So there's a principal threat now of e6, and this would undermine the g6 pawn. Because so, if f e, then um, either queen g6 or knight g6. So black's actually in quite big trouble here. And played seemingly, um, well, an ir irrelevant move, it seems, a5. So it just, just perhaps trying to develop this knight to a6. Now, white continued to undermine um, black's position by playing e6. And it's really, really increasing the advantage for white. This knight on f4 is actually quite powerful in supporting this e6, as well as smashing up black's pawns here. So after fe, queen takes g6, there's now very, very clear threat of like um, queen takes e8, knight h5 to f6 is also dangerous, potentially. Black played knight a6, and here now white played a very sharp tactical move. Can you spot it? I'll give you five seconds starting from now. White in this position played bishop d8, so he's threatening the rook and he's also vacated the g5 square. So if rook takes bishop, knight g5 would be uh, very, very dangerous for black. Let's have a look. Rook takes d8, knight g5, and here. So white's threatening both queen f7 and queen h7. Say knight f6, then this is a mating two here with queen f7, check, king h8 and knight g6. So these knights are very, very dangerous in this position, both of them. So that's why after bishop d8, black actually played e5. And white now took that rook, so winning the exchange. Well, if black was able to win this bishop back. But after knight c7, white played um, queen h5. So now black regains some material with e takes f4. But then knight g5. And here, black actually resigned. So let's have a look now. What? Why did black resign here? Again, principal threats, queen f7, queen h7. So let's say knight f6. Then bishop takes f6. And this is crushing, still threatening queen h7 mate, so that's inadequate. If queen h6, queen f7, and after king h8, queen takes d7, winning lots of material. So that's very, very unpleasant as well. So there's really no adequate defence here. So, let's have a look in overview and summary at what happened here, why black's position was dismantled so quickly. So let's start from the beginning. A seemingly um, solid defence was chosen by black. And white played quite innovatively, not going for the mainstream Slav variations, but instead simply, simply playing e3, a humble looking move, just reinforcing c4. And even more so with knight d2, just reinforcing again c4. And the queen is losing control though of the d3 square, but white compensates for that by playing now queen b3. Usually the Slav, you know, it seems to be quite a trendy system at the moment, so this is actually quite a topical game, especially with black playing a6 and this bishop a f5. It just seemed to go disastrously wrong, though, for black. So after this bishop d3, maybe black should have tried just bishop takes d3 here. So this bishop g6 was just asking white to carry out this threat of bishop takes g6 at the right, um, the most effective moment. So maybe that was a key part of white's advantage being able to double black's pawns, but taking the most appropriate opportunity to do so with maximum advantage. And it so happened that after creating this wedge, that now was the time to take on g6. After hg, white first played this knight f1, and then intensified the pressure on the queen's side by simply playing rook c1. So the queen's quite uh, tactically useful in pressurising black's queen's side, and also threatening now queen takes d5 in some variations. So black tried to do something, uh, to neutralise the pressure. He played queen b6. But the queen now on c2, staring at that g6 pawn, um, was actually um, the beginning of the end for black, especially now as black tried to free his game. He created a lot more damage in his position after this knight e3. He now played c5. But unfortunately, with c5, white has the opportunity for d5, and this pawn, you know, is is currently being blocked by black's e6 pawn. But after this ed, the pawn's now free to be used as a battering ram 
with e6 now. So after queen c6, knight f4, white's now really threatening e6, and it's a really unpleasant position for black here. After a5, white carried on with e6, ploughing into black's um, pawn structure. So after fe, queen takes g6, six, and after bishop d8, a nice fast tactical move. This was really the end for black. e5 now, queen takes e8, and after knight c7, queen h5, white now has the big threat of knight g5. So after e takes f4, knight g5, black had had enough. This bishop on d8 is tactically very useful, because if knight f6, then bishop takes f6. So black resigned here. I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.